Hi guys. We'll jump it on. Hope everybody's well. Oh, hi, Chastity. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Okay, so there's a, a few more people that are jumping on. Um, at this time, we're going to ask that everybody mute their microphones. Sophia, mute mic for me, please. Thank you. All right, everybody. Welcome to another e virtual event brought to you by the Boca Chamber. Thank you for being here today. We are very excited to um, be able to present this event to you today to our very special members while you're locked up at home. Give you something else to do instead of just sitting at your computer working all day long. But uh, thank you again for coming. At this time, Sophia is going to give you just a little bit on how to navigate your Zoom if you have any questions. Sophia, take it away. Hi everybody, welcome to the virtual presentation. Um, the, the best way to ask questions throughout the presentation is we're actually gonna do it at the end. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's a little toolbar. If you click the chat button, a box will pop up and you'll have the option to either raise your hand or just put a chat or type something in the chat box. And if you're on your phone, it's actually the three little dots. I don't know if you can see that. If you click that, you'll have the options to do the chat on your phone as well. Um, but throughout the presentation, we're going to be muting everyone's mics. And then if you want to actually speak, we'll do it at the end and I'll unmute you. Thanks so much, Sophia. So at this time we have our very own EVP of the Boca Chamber, Ms. Sarah Pearson, who will be introducing our wonderful speaker today. Why, thank you, Ms. Chastity, and it's good to see some of you and your, your headshots and seeing you all on video. It's as if we're in the same room. Um, I do want to thank Michael for quickly getting on this call. We reached out to him not too long ago, and he made it happen. Uh, I know you're extremely busy, and we very much appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about what Career Source is doing. I know you, again, are, are you know, probably getting many, many phone calls throughout the day and night. So I will introduce Michael now. He's the Assistant Vice President of Business Services, Career Source, Palm Beach County. He uh, is, as I said, the Assistant Vice President of Career Source, Palm Beach County, our regional workforce board. So Career Source is throughout the nation, but this is our Palm Beach County regional board. Uh, through Career Source, Michael collaborates with regional businesses, government, education, and industry leaders to spur job growth and business development. We personally, the Chamber works with him on a regular basis. He works with Chambers obviously throughout the region as well. He represents Career Source on a variety of boards and committees across South Florida, including Palm Beach County's League of Cities, City of West Palm Beach Mayor's Village Initiative, and Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council's comprehensive economic development strategies, Miami-Dade College Science and Biotechnology Advisory Board, Florida Manufacturing Trade Grants, City of West Palm Beach National Center for Arts and Technology, City of Delray Beach, WARC, Palm Beach Tech, South Florida Manf Manufacturing Association and Marine Industry Association of Palm Beach County. And again, you probably see Michael in many of our events. He's gets, you know, he's very much involved in a number of uh, chambers and other organizations throughout our county. And without further ado, Mr. Michael Corbett. Thank you. Hello, Chair, and hello, fellow Zoomers this afternoon. We're glad to have you on board here. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time talking about what we do and some of the programs and services that we spend time on at Career Source. As Sarah said, we're one of 24 boards across the state of Florida and we handle Palm Beach County. Much of my time is spent helping local businesses and trying to hire their people through our recruiters and staffers. We spend a lot of time with job candidates, trying to coach them and helping them find employment. 
we have a lot of training grants and a lot of scholarships and funds to try to get people back to work. We have various departments here at Career Source. We have eight people on staff that are veterans that focus on the veterans and their spouses and families, a youth and young adult department that we do things in Bell Glade, West Palm Beach, and now in Delray Beach, disability and special needs department, and a reentry department where we actually go into the prisons and jails and try to get those people prepared for when they do come out. We are not the unemployment office. Unfortunately, at this time, people think this is where they should come and so forth. We are not the unemployment office. However, we do assist people with that. And I'll spend a moment here. In the last filing of Wednesday or Friday of last week, there's over 10,000 people in Palm Beach County alone that have filed unemployment compensation claims. And that's a big spike for us. We've had upwards of 800 phone calls where staff has been trained to try to get back to people and upwards of 1,100 emails, people wanting to know how to file, what if they are eligible, can they reset their passwords, things of this nature. We are assisting people and we are very busy at this point in time. One of the best things you can convey to people you know that are looking to file unemployment is to go to floridajobs.org. And this is a snapshot of the reemployment assistance page where you would file your claim. They have three or four videos that are very helpful to people, so they walk them through how to file a claim. It does take a lot of time. I would suggest if people can file online, they do so. If they do call the 800 number, they're going to be waiting an awfully long time, unfortunately. So I would not do that. For employers that are looking to downsize or displace or cut back hours of employees, floridajobs.org, this is the employment page that I have a snapshot for you to look at. There's a lot of information there for employers to try to determine what is best for their business. There's a lot being thrown on employers these days with different loan packages and the programs being set aside. So being a business owner and executive today is really a lot of work to try to get through these challenging times. Once they file a claim, this is the best site for a job candidate to go to look for jobs. EmployFlorida.com is a very comprehensive job board. It spiders in a lot of different jobs as employers enter them on various job boards. This updates real time, all the time. So if people are looking for jobs, this is the place to go. I can tell you we have well over 400 open jobs in Palm Beach County right now. Warehouse people, stocking people, different service types of jobs. So there are jobs out there and employers now that this stimulus package has been moving forward, they're trying to make a determination whether they want to hire and if so, how many and when. We also have a virtual career system. This is basically a one-stop shop for people to go to. They can understand the different jobs, they can take assessments, the different training and programs that are eligible for them. They don't physically need to come into a brick and mortar location. So the virtual career system is something that is very handy. You can use it on your Android, your iPhone, on your tablet, on your PC. Very good tool that we've worked very hard to create. I'm gonna change gears here a little bit on what we do at CareerSource. This is a little bit of an older photo, but this shows where employment is changing in the United States. The green balloons and bubbles are where it's increasing and the pink balloons are where employment has been downsizing. And you can see pretty much the 11 large clusters across North America where the job markets continue to be strong. You can see in South Florida with our Broward, Miami-Dade and Treasure Coast friends, we're one of the largest in the country, actually approaching the fifth largest metropolitan statistical area in the country. So our job market for the most part is stable. We are not reliant upon one industry to, to help move things forward. We have a very diverse economy, which is great. Some of the things that Sarah mentioned in my bio, these are things that we do, partnering with the Business Development Board, the Economic Development Offices with the municipalities, state and local government, all the chambers we're very active with, as well as the higher 
education institutions. So we, we love to be involved with these types of initiatives and make things better for all of us. You probably have seen the Florida Chamber Foundation's vision for the 2010, 2010 plan that they brought forward many years ago, the six pillars. As you can see, the first pillar is the talent supply and education. And as Mark Wilson, their president, and Jerry Parrish, their forecast economic researcher, if you don't have the first pillar, the other five pillars are really irrelevant. I think we're still focusing on this today. Many of us participate in meetings and activities to try to move this forward as a state. It's, it's very important. They've done a great job with this vision from the, the six pillar plan. I talked a little bit about training grants. We have three primary grants that you can find on our website under the training tab. On the job training is probably the most popular to bring an employee on to train them on specific skill sets. We typically can reimburse those individuals that are eligible and suitable once they're hired, then it'd be two, three months, and then we reimburse you for half of their salary for a period of time. The customized training is to help people upgrade their skills and hopefully to obtain a national or industry credential certificate. And then the incumbent worker training grants are state funded, administered by the state to Resource Florida. It's really customized training, but it's to help existing for-profit businesses grow and expand. And our funding cycle starts on July 1st, so we have new funds coming available in about three months. Career expos and job fairs. I, I can't stress how beneficial and valuable these types of activities are to us. Anytime we can put people in a room with hiring managers, good things are going to happen. And you can see a couple of samples that we've done over the course of the last couple of years. And on the bottom left, on April 22nd, we are going to work with Palm Beach Tech and our friends at the Boca Raton Innovation Campus to do a virtual career expo. And the companies can post their job openings out there. Candidates can research and decide if they would like to file for those types of jobs and apply. And it's a good way to try to match, make people up together and hopefully help get people employed. We're gonna to continue to do more virtual career expos and job fairs as time progresses. A new program that we've been working on for some time now is the apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship programs. The Trump administration has released quite a lot of money over the last year or so to focus on apprenticeships and pre-apprenticeships. These have been very popular up north in the manufacturing and the heavy sectors have you. Over the last couple of decades, it's been a bit, little bit slow to migrate to the south, but now it's becoming popular. And the whole concept is to get people into short term, maybe four to six week training programs and in, introduce them to an employer in a specific industry. We as a workforce board have been fortunate to be awarded a number of grants in the last year. Uh, one of particular is aviation and engineering. We partnered with CareerSource Brevard, which is a very large space cluster on a grant that had been administered out in California through Northrop Grumman. We're basically replicating that grant as we have over 21,000 people employed in our county in aviation and aerospace and engineering. These are all great jobs, 90 some thousand dollar a year average salary. And we'd love to increase that pipeline of talent moving into that industry. The marine industry is also a very robust industry employing over 21,000 people. We partnered with our friends to the north, the Research Coast, Treasure Coast. They have a lot of boat builders up there. We happen to have a lot of boat service providers here in Palm Beach County. Average salary in the mid $50,000 range. And we're very happy about that. These are actually launching online virtually tomorrow. We have also been awarded a nice grant for the life sciences and pharmaceutical industry. If you've lived here for a while, you know there's been a nice focus on those types of industries and companies coming here. So these are three targeted industries that we feel as though will help grow and expand with employers and with job seekers. This is a great slide to show how students and candidates can on-ramp and off-ramp into pre-apprenticeships and apprenticeships. 
You can see there's veterans, high school students, community or state college, adult reentry or transitioners coming out of four-year institutions or current workers. And you can see that it leads to full-time work and that is, that's wonderful because this is what we need is short-term training programs that would lead into these types of careers. And I do think you will continue to see a lot of investment push towards these types of programs. One of the last things I'll talk about today is the gig economy. And people in this day and age aren't traditional workers as they once were. And you can see the traditional work arrangements in the blue bubble, non-traditional work arrangements in the orange bubble, and then alternative work arrangements in the green bubble. And then the statistics on the sides of each of these. This represents roughly a quarter of our workers here in the state of Florida. And through CareerSource Florida, we've been focusing on this new gig economy, people that have a side hustle, people that do more than one job. And I think we're gonna continue to see this moving forward now, especially now that we're working virtually and remotely as we are today. Here's the type of archetypes that we are focusing on here in the state of Florida. And we have taken a lead to take a look at what categories these folks are falling into. And you can see the subscriber, the reluctant who kind of just is doing this part-time, the alternative, the supplementer, the retiree, which we certainly have a lot of, and then the enthusiast. We have a work group through Career Source Florida that myself and Julia spend time on each week and we're starting to do surveys out to the community for not only the workers but companies. And this slide really resonates why I've been involved with this because the state of Florida is the largest portion of gig workers of any state in the United States. So we'll keep a close eye on this because again, I think this is the, the work of, of people is changing. The world of work is changing before our eyes today because of everything that's happening. And then the type of gig work that is available for folks. So this is the results of about 500 survey respondents in the state of Florida that are gig workers. And these are, they're telling us where they're spending their time and the type of work that they're doing. So now we're trying to figure out what type of training and programs that we can provide these gig workers to move forward in their careers. Many of them wanna know how to better market themselves. They wanna know how better to utilize social media and really participate in their communities. And I hope that has been informative to you that participated fellow Zoomers today. And I'll be happy to open it up for questions at this time. anyone has any questions, you can put them in the chat box. Um, while I'm waiting for some questions to come in, just so everyone knows, this whole presentation is recorded and we'll be sending a follow-up email to everyone who registered with the PowerPoint slides along with the link to YouTube with all of this recorded. Michael, we have a question. Um, what do you see as a forecast in the coming year? A forecast for the job market? Well, I think we're all in challenging times here. I don't have a crystal ball, as does anyone else. I think we're gonna get through this. We have a very strong community. We have a very diverse community here in Palm Beach County. We are a resource rich community. The Business Development Board and the Chambers and Economic Development folks we have a lot of prospective companies that are interested in coming to Palm Beach County. I see that trend continuing in various industries. I, I think we'll come out of this stronger. I think the world of work will, will change and innovate over time. But I, have a, a, I see a very bright, promising future for Palm Beach County and our region. If you get unemployment benefits granted to you, do you still receive the 
deathbed stimulus? Is it one or the other? What I understand now, and this is still being sorted out, is the state of Florida provides claimants 12 weeks at a maximum of $275 based on your income and filing. From what I understand, the Fed is stepping in to extend that another 13 weeks, so basically doubling this almost to a half of a year, and they can add up to $600 a week. I don't think that that final number has been determined, but that is what I've heard in various phone calls and conversations I'm participating in. Um, Michael, oh. I, I, I have a question. This is Sarah. I don't know how to get my video back up, but are you, are you hearing that there are some challenges as it relates to the unemployment um, money that people are receiving, kind of deterring them from wanting to be employed or, or, you know, move forward? Have you heard any of that? I have not, Sarah. I think there's just, like I said last week, we're upwards over 10,000 claimants now. So the hospitality industry was devastated. The tourism industry, a lot of industries have been heavily impacted. I think people are trying to sort through things. I don't, haven't heard that there's been challenges in claimants they're spending a lot of time on the phone trying to file their claim, but I haven't heard where people have been reluctant to try to, to find work. Our recruiters are actually pretty busy with job seekers now, with resume overview and screening and trying to help them look at careers and, and search and then apply for jobs. But I'll, I'll keep an eye on that and an ear open for it. Um, what is the best way to connect a company with multiple layoffs with the companies that are hiring? Okay, so we are able to do what's called a REACT. As a workforce board, we can be engaged by a company where we will actually work with their HR team and executive team to help them figure out what they want to do, how they would like to downsize, and then relay all the information to the people that are going to be displaced. We, we do that and we're seeing a spike. We can actually do that virtually now. And then if, if companies, I think the second part of your question is if they want to try to hire again to engage us, we will do virtual hiring events and, and hiring, recruiting and screening and so forth for them. So we're, we're happy to do that. We do that all the time. All right, we have another question. As a sole entrepreneur who does not take a salary, can they file for unemployment or can they access any of the SBA loans or state grants available? Yes to all of the above. Again, I would go to floridajobs.org. I would go to the reemployment assistance page to look about filing. They're gonna ask questions about your income, frequency, the type of industry. They're gonna ask specific jobs and you can file. I don't know the eligibility of all that. It's individual, case by case. And then companies, obviously, and individual entrepreneurs, these loan packages that are being pushed out there, they're specifically to small and medium-sized businesses. And I would, I would suggest you go to the SPDC or your chamber or economic development folks to try to find out the specifics on that. What is a good resource for educators, training institutions, and those who want to help with enabling people to work remotely? Who can we reach out to? Well, I, by being attached to the Boca Chamber and the Boynton Chamber, working with your teams, trying to figure out how to connect out there, that's probably the best thing. This is all kind of a work in progress as we're all finding out and becoming more astute at becoming virtually and teleworking from home. But I would stay as well connected as possible. This is a real trick for me because I'm used to being out with people all the time as you folks are and it's, it's a change of pace for me, but we're all adjusting. Do we have any more questions? I think that's, that's it for right now. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for um, doing this for us, Michael. We greatly appreciate the information. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, you will get an email. Sophia will uh, share all the content with you and you can see the recording in her share or you can check our YouTube playlist. Um, we have a bunch of, play uh, we have one playlist that has a bunch of the webinars that we've been 
um, producing for the past couple of weeks. So if you missed it or you have a friend that missed it and you wanna share it, you'll be able to share that information. And thank you again, Michael. Michael's contact is on the screen right now um, in the email. Sophia will share that with you so that if you have any questions, you can send him an email and um, check out our calendar. We have a few more um, events coming your way. Uh, we have some for the rest of the week. Check out our calendar. They're very informational. They're very informative. And everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll Zoom you soon. Bye.